check that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so welcome back. This is November 9th lesson. Um, you've just taken your chapter three test, and uh, we're going to get going with our next chapter, which is chapter four. Um, so take a moment. Um, go, you're going to have to do some work here. So you can. Um, this should be a handout. If you don't, you're going to have to use graph paper, but go, hopefully the handout helps, and you can maybe write on the handout. If not, well, you can still um, do it in your notebook, okay? So go ahead, take a moment. Okay, because this is a video and I can't ask questions and no one's going to answer, so... Number one, is there a constant rate in each table? So, let me look at this table. It seems to be about time and progress. Well, time increases at a constant rate of plus one minutes. And the push-ups also increase at a constant rate of plus 12. So, table one. Yes, 12 push-ups per minute. All right, the next one, plus 1, plus 1, plus 4, minus 10, minus 10, minus 40. Okay, do you think that's a constant rate? And I would say if you look really quickly, you would say, no, that's plus 1, plus 1, plus 4. That's negative 10, negative 10, negative 40. And someone says, well, Mr. Marin, the time is missing 4 on this side. It, like, jumps from 2 to 6. And this one jumps from 80 to 40. What if we wrote in the other times to see what might happen? So if we follow the pattern of minus 10, 3 would be 70 if we follow the pattern. Four would be 60. Five seconds later, it would be 50. And six would be 40. So even though you don't see every part of the table, a student usually says, it's still plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. And then you can still get the minus 10, minus 10, So, yes, uh, minus 10 feet per second. Okay, and I hopefully you got a chance to graph. I'm going to graph them of each and then take a look. So, 1, 12, 2, 3, 4, 3, 1. I might want to label it. This is time, number of push ups, and this is time, minutes, seconds, and this is distance in feet. And at zero, it's 100, at one, it's 90, at two, it's 80. At six, it was 40. But maybe you added the new points, right? The ones that someone else shared. It's 30, uh, 370, 465 feet. Okay. okay. All right. So I have one follow up question. We decided that the tables are a constant, right? So what does a constant? look like on a graph. And I would ask you to pause and think about that. So we graph two constant rates, and what does it appear to be happening? Like is there something, what's a constant rate look like in a graph? Shapes them. And so students talk and I tend to say, anyone have a thought and says, the points line up in a straight line, right? And 
and that's what it appears. It appears like the a constant ray causes the points to be lined up, so we could put one straight line between them. Yeah, those are right down in the line. Okay, so yeah, it looks like a constant rate. It's important to write down. It looks like a constant rate is a graph, right? Okay. So, depending on um, what year it is, you might have been able seen linear when you were in seventh grade. This year you might not have, but almost everything you can remember about the word linear. And you would do a brainstorm normally, and I'll have to change this for this upcoming year, but for now, what time is that? Okay, for now you can just, um, what does the word linear mean to you? Okay, anything you remember? I'm gonna have more do this as a brainstorm for myself. If you know words or seen some words, you can write them down. So, linear for me, um, I think of the word line, so linear line is in it. Some vocabulary words that you're gonna see, something called slope, y-intercept, Intercept. You're going to hear about steepness. And you're going to hear about positive, negative, zero, and undefined. And you're going to see some formulas. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You're going to hear things like change in y over change in x, which is the same thing as rise over run. And the word ratio, you're going to <coughs> see graphs. <coughs> um, often people say constant rate. I don't even forget any of this stuff. Oh, um, you might remember this, or maybe you've seen y equals mx plus b. Um, there's plenty of word problems that we're going to see. You're going to have to find slope. You're going to have to find the y-intercept sometimes. And you're going to be writing equations as well. Um, and usually, see, students really remember stuff, and I just kind of forget what I'm going to say. Well, this is some of the stuff we're going to talk about um, today, but that's a, you know, if you wanted to write this down in your notebook and add it, like, we're going to come back to all these terms in the next um, chapter, which we're going to spend some time on. So, in 4.1, we're going to study something called linear functions and equations. There are four ways to identify whether you're looking at something called linear functions. It's a specific type of function. So, if you study functions in Chapter 3, any function, it's a really special one that you're going to see moving forward forever and ever and ever. Linear functions. If you decide to study it, it's very um, relevant to math as you move through our years. So there's four ways to identify it. You can identify it by just looking at the equation. I can tell you that this is linear. That is a linear function. Uh, word problems. Total wages equal $5 per hour. So you're going to be able to look and decide if the word problem is going to make is a linear function. You can look at a table. I can tell you right now that this is a linear function. And you're going to be able to look at the graph of any function. And specifically, you're going to be able to notice that it's a linear function.
okay? And this is just the beginning, but I want to tell you that this is our end goal, is to notice whether it's a linear function in all these forms. So, um, what we're going to do now is see a PowerPoint, and there you should, there's a handout I'm going to show you in a second. But what we're first going to do is decide whether a bunch of functions are linear, and we have to know what linear functions look like. So let me pull up that PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. And I want to five percent HS slide share. Get some stuff. Okay, so you should be able to see this, um, and I would get usually someone to read, but there's identifying linear functions. The graph represents a function because each domain value, x, is paired with exactly one y value. So this is a function because 1 goes with 120, 2 goes with 240, and every input will only have one output. Notice that the graph is a straight line. A function whose graph forms a straight line is called a linear function. And that's really important. You might want to read that again, but I'll read it. A function whose graph forms a straight line is called a linear function. That's pretty straightforward, I think, right? So repeat after me, linear function. Linear function. All right, great. Now just you, linear function. Linear function. Hey, I said just you. Yeah, so it's linear function. Just a line on a graph. So we're going to take a moment before we talk about the equation and just think about the graph because I think it's a simple one. So we're going to try to identify a linear function by its graph. And we're just going to do this together as a class. So we're going to do two things. Is the graph a function and is it a linear function? First, is this graph we're looking at a function? Yes, it passes the vertical line test. Is it a linear function? Yes, it's a straight line. Boom. All right, take a look at this one. Is it a function? Whoa, is it a function? Yes, each input only has one output. Is it a linear function? No, it's not a linear function. It's not a straight line. Next one, is this a function that we're looking at? Is it, is it linear? Yes, it's linear. Is it a function though? No, why not? Because the input of negative two has a lot of outputs. So this isn't a function, but it is a linear. It's a line, right? So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through this chapter, but straight up and down lines are not functions. So technically they're not linear functions, but they are linear. All right, here's the last one. Is this a function? Yes, is it linear? Yes, so it's both a function and a linear function. How about this one? What do you think? Function or not a function? What'd you say? function, right? Yeah, totally. It's totally a function. Each input only has one output. Is it a linear function? Yep, sure is, right? It's a straight line. It's both a function and a linear function. Oh, see, before we get to equations, so um, we're going to talk about the way that you can tell if it's a Linear function by looking at a table. Sorry, I shouldn't have jumped that line. You can sometimes identify a linear function by looking at a table or a list of ordered pairs. In a linear function, a constant change in x corresponds to a constant change in y. That's what we saw in the do now table, right, with the different tables. So here's an example. The x's 
have a constant change of plus 1. And the y values have a constant change of negative 3. So this is a linear function. All right, we're going to look for a constant change of addition or subtraction on either side. If so, you know, it's easy. We can say that that's definitely a linear function. And if you graphed it, you would see, yeah, if I graphed all the points, they form one straight line, which is a linear function. All right, the next one. What do you think? Is it a linear function? Is there a constant rate of change in both x and y? You would turn and talk, touch your neighbor, we would come back. I would say the x is I have a constant rate of plus 1, but the y is changed by negative 3, then negative 1. No, that is not a constant change. So not satisfy a linear function. And if you graphed it, you would see, oh, wait a second. Look at, that's not a line. That's not a straight line. All right. So what I want to do is take a moment. Um, sometimes to tell if ordered pairs are going to be a line. And you could graph it, but one other thing is you could put them in a table. Sometimes it's easier to see. List them by domain and range, right? Okay, now we're going to look for the pattern, right? Like, let's look at the domain. Oh, all plus 4. Let's look at the range. All plus 3. So what do you say? Linear function? Yes, totally. It is a linear function. All right, and then I would have you turn and talk and think about this one. But I'll, let's check it out. Let's write them in the table, right? And now we can look and see if there's a constant change in x. Oh, we're good. Oh, are we good on the y's? Not for being linear. So this is not a linear function. OK, so in this we're going to get to like our first activity where we, I don't kind of walk you through it. All right, and we would someone read it. So another way to determine whether a function is linear is to look at its equation. A function is linear if it can be described by a linear equation. A linear equation is any equation written in the form, standard form, shown below. Okay, so repeat after me, standard form, standard form. So if you can write it in standard form, then you know you have a linear function. Um, and so the standard form is a times x plus b times y equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, but a and b both are not 0. Okay, and we'll look at that. OK, so there's a way that I want you to think about it. Notice that when a linear function is written in standard form, and I would ask you to add these to notebooks, you can see that the variable x and y both have exponents of 1. I know you don't see the exponents here, but since we don't have a 2 or a 3 exponent or it's a squared, we have to assume that it's 1. Also notice that the x, that the ax and the by are not being multiplied together. You can't have that if you want it to be a linear function. And lastly, x and y can, do not pair in the denominators. So they're not in the bottom of a fraction, both of them. They're not up in the exponent, so you don't have a x as an exponent or a y as an exponent. And they're also not in radical signs, which are square roots. right? So radical sign are the square roots or other roots. We'll talk about more of those when we get to chapter 5. Oh, chapter 6, excuse me. All right, so flip over to the back of the do now. And with by yourself or with your neighbor, I want you to take a moment. Um, try to figure out which ones are linear functions based on these three rules. All right. So x and y both have to have an exponent of one. X and y are not can't be multiplied together, 
and x and y do not appear in denominators, exponents, or radical signs. Okay? So, let's take a look at number one. 2x equals 4y. So, does x and y both have uh, exponents of 1? Yes. Because they, they don't have an exponent. Oh, well, they do. You just can't see it. It's 1. All right. Uh, the next one. X and Y, are they being multiplied together? Nope. And the last one, do they appear in the denominator? No. Are they in an exponent? No. Are they in a rat, uh, square root sign? No. Boom. Number one is a linear function. Okay. So I want you to go with your neighbor. Go ahead and talk about all of these or do them yourself. This is going to be our classwork. And we'll come back at the end and kind of go over it. I'll do a video of me explaining all of them. But for now, that's the end. Let's see. And, and then we're going to talk more about the next part later. So let me cancel that. All right, so I'll post a video of me going over all these and saying which ones are around. But most people get this.